So, Taylor Swift has a surprise new album out. Taylor Swift has easily been one of the biggest voices in pop music over the past 10 years now and in a lot of ways it's easy to see why. Her early country pop stuff was very accessible and in a lot of ways uninventive, but the songs were catchy and there was something about her style that felt very wholesome and down to earth. And as she started to evolve, her music became grander, more produced and much more confident than anything she put out before. 2014's 1980 was her defining moment as a pop artist, winning all the Grammys and going on to create this huge wave of 80s synth pop influence across the mainstream charts. But her darker, more EDM inspired follow up reputation left an incredibly sour taste in my mouth due to its almost egotistical and in your face style, which I just felt was against everything that attracted me to her music to begin with. 2020 was supposed to be dedicated to touring her most recent album, Lover, released in August of last year but obviously the pandemic we're in completely ruined that. So instead of doing the live stream thing everyone else is doing or even just taking a break, Taylor decided to work on a much more low-key record than anything she's done in years. Folklore diverts from her usual mainstream pop sound into an indie folk chamber pop style, clearly inspired by musicians like Bon Iver who also features on one of the album's tracks. Rather than super bouncy upbeat tracks, this album is much more down-tempo and at times very bare. The album's rustic and forest-driven imagery translate perfectly through its very warm yet at times somber music which although is a little repetitive at points can sound beautiful in the album's best moments. The opening track The One is the perfect introduction to the album's sound with its soft pianos, percussive acoustic guitars and hip-hop sounding drum loop. There's a very nostalgic feel to the track as Taylor sings about a life in which the wishes she used to have with an ex-lover came true. This feeling of nostalgia carries on to the song The Last Great American Dynasty in which Taylor compares herself to composer and artist Rebecca Harkness. She sings about being heavily critiqued in the tabloid press as well as spending her life surrounded by star-studded parties. It seems to be in a lot of ways Taylor singing about a fear of being consumed by her fame and the lifestyles that you associate with that. The heavily descriptive poetic nature of the track works really well and is perfectly complemented by the way Taylor sings the majority of the song in a very low octave. It easily has one of the catchiest hooks on the record and I love the atmospheric yet at times kind of upbeat instrumentation that runs throughout. Many of the songs on the album show Taylor being very honest and open and it leads to a lot of moments where she explores her insecurities in a way that she hasn't really done before. The old rock inspired track Mirrorball shows her comparing herself to a disco ball in the way she entertains everyone but shatters like glass when she's hurt. Musically I think it's one of the best tracks on the album with its spacey moody guitars and reverb heavy vocals. However I do think the bareness of the track does make it feel a little bit empty at times whereas it's a song that is clearly trying to have this huge scope to it. This Is Me Trying is another very insecure track in which Taylor shows accepting her relationship issues and the way she ruins her own own healing process. It's another more moody and spacious track which I definitely think sounds a lot larger due to the usage of strings and double tracked vocals. The lyrics are sharp and mournful and feature some of the best metaphorical moments throughout the album. You're a flashback in a film reel on the one screen in my town being one of the album's best lyrical moments. Invisible String sounds a bit like a blending of Sufjan Stevens and modern day Bon Iver with its finger pick guitar lines, drum machines and string sections. Taylor references the Chinese red string myth and expresses gratitude to her previous failed relationships leading her to find her current one. It's a romantic, sweet and beautiful love song. Her maturation and changing view on romance is also shown on the track Peace which has this pulsating synth line which runs throughout and has really great bass work as well. The album also features a trilogy of songs that tackle the theme of love called the Teenage Love Triangle consisting of Cardigan, August and Betty where each song explores a love triangle from one of the person's perspectives at a different point in their life. While I like the darker more doomed lyrical style to the second and third parts I don't think it works as well on Cardigan, which seems to just be a series of metaphors, some of which work and some of which come off a little bit tired and cliched. The track Exile, which features Bon Iver, is also, in my opinion, a track that I think lyrically works really well but doesn't really manage to capture its emotional power through the instrumentation and melodies which both feel a little bit run of the mill and basic. It feels like a pretty average pop ballad performed through this 
bare piano and string led sound and although it has some great moments and things about it I really like I don't think it manages to capture either of the artist's strongest qualities. Musically in general the album does follow a very similar style and at points definitely feels a little bit one note but I think Taylor's honest and poetic storytelling throughout the tracks help elevate it. Throughout the album it's very obvious that Taylor's voice suits this style of music much better than grander up-tempo pop music and I think in a lot of ways this album kind of serves as an example of her getting to show off her best qualities as a songwriter and a singer as well. Without the lavish production and multiple songwriters Taylor really gets to breathe and create the most honest album of her career to date. There are definitely moments that work better than others and I do feel like a lot of the songs do sound very very similar which I can understand being a huge issue for some people but I think it's an album filled with beautiful warmth and incredibly fresh music and some of the best songs that she's ever written. I'm going to give Folklore by Taylor Swift three and a half stars out of five.